All right, hello and welcome to Three Big Things, a Cineboys, but not the Cineboys podcast, part of the Cork Bats Podcast Network. I'm Kenny from Cork Bats slash head boy of the Cineboys, uh, and Three Big Things is a podcast where I sit down with a guest or guests to discuss this weekend's biggest movie release. Why is it called Three Big Things? Simple. We're going to give you three big things, sometimes more, that you should consider if you're on the fence about seeing a movie. This week... We're discussing Bo is Afraid, and today I will be joined by Billy Rock of Do You Like Apples. Billy, how are you? I'm doing great, Kenny. Uh, I'm excited to be back in this new iteration of the Cineboys. It's exciting. Um, as you said, uh, we're not live for this one, so we have we can make mistakes. We yes. can edit things out, so I'm going to be aggressive today, I think. Okay, my, good. Well, like, don't, don't be, like, too aggressive where, like, okay, I have it. to get annoyed that I have to go back and cut things out. <laughs> okay, sounds good. I only got so much time. But, mm-hmm. Billy, I'm glad you're here. And it's exciting. You, you're officially on the, um, I guess we could call it the pilot episode of Ooh. Three Big Things. Mm-hmm. Is a pod, like, is, do they call them pilots for podcasts? I don't know. I don't know how that stuff works. But is, is, are the court bass people going to, look at this and see if it's going to be released right they're gonna yeah yeah. this is yeah exactly they're gonna view it first and then decide whether or not they're gonna order more episodes of three big things so um i have a lot of pressure now yeah yeah well i mean you don't have to worry about it you're you know you're just (laughs) visiting it's all on me really um Mm -hmm. but yeah so this is the first episode of three big things um and again like i said really what it is it's just a podcast for you if you've watched the movie and want to listen along and, and you know comment later after you listen feel free if you're on the fence about it, that's really why we're here, is to kind of give you a better idea of what to expect. And I will say this, we are going to try to be spoiler-free, but we'll just say light spoilers, because maybe we'll say something that, you know, uh, you know, we don't want to ruin the movie for you, um, but you might just like it a little bit less. Um, so we'll just go ahead and put that disclaimer out there. So again, we're talking about Bo is Afraid. So... Real quick, Bo is Afraid is, just to give you a quick plot summary of it, this is what IMDb says. Um, Before I read this, though, I'll just say that, you know, probably any plot summary you read on Bo is Afraid is going to leave out a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, So IMDb says, following the sudden death of his mother, a mild-mannered but anxiety-ridden man confronts his darkest fears as he embarks on an epic Kafka-esque odyssey back home. Um, so the movie is directed by Ari Aster, uh, who directed Hereditary and Midsummer. Um, it stars Joaquin Phoenix, Patti LuPone, Amy Ryan, Nathan Lane, um, and a few others. Um, so before we get into our big things, though, let me just get the vibe of the room. Like, Billy, if you were to, like, just sum up how you feel about this movie real quick, like, what would that summation look like? Or what would it sound like? I really enjoyed it, but I'm also very glad that right after finishing this movie, I already had plans to see Air with friends for a friend's birthday, and that was a great palate cleanser for the end of it. It's uh, You go from a three-hour epic to an hour and a half silly comedy about shoes, and I needed that. But overall, I, it's going to be on the bottom of my Ari Aster favorites, but I really enjoyed it overall, I think. Yeah, it was that- more than I expected. And that's kind of what I, the surprise that I had. So it was a really funny movie for parts of it. And you're not going to be completely traumatized like other Ari Aster movies, I think. No, like that, I, that's, I think that's great. I, and I agree. I am, um, I'm very much in the boat where I think I liked it. I, in fact, I liked it. I'll say it. I don't think like I can go ahead and stake my claim. I liked this movie. (laughs) Um, can I recommend it to anybody? No, maybe okay. you like you, like, I can't think of anybody in my life that I would recommend this movie to maybe like you and drew, um, right. but I like, recommend it. like it's, it's a weird combination. Cause even for people like us who try to see as much as we can, it's not like, I'm going to be like confident that you're going to like it. Like, no, you might be mad that I told you to go see exactly the hour areas or nightmare comedy. So, right. It's very much a movie that it's very long. It doesn't really have, it has a plot. I I don't think it's plotless. You understand what's kind of going on for the most part. Like you understand like the, the arc of the story, but there's a lot of stuff in here that really doesn't make a lot of sense. In fact, like the movie I would compare it to 
is, I don't know if you've ever seen this movie, and I would recommend it to you if you have not seen it. It's called uh, Southland Tales, Richard Kelly's Southland Tales. Mm, I haven't seen it. Okay. So Southland Tales was Richard Kelly's follow-up to Donnie Darko. It makes pretty much no sense. Everybody hated it. got terrible reviews. Um, for whatever reason, though, I love it. I dig it. It's very vibey. It's very surreal. Um, it's like basically similar to this movie. It's like they're throwing everything at the wall just to get a feeling. Like they want you to feel a certain way, but they're not very... Like, they don't really care about the actual story points or, like, the writing or the line delivery. So, it's very interesting. Highly recommend it to you, Billy. You, you probably won't like it. Um, <laughs> but you'll you'll enjoy watching it for the, sin, like, the sake of, like, who's in it. Like, the cast is... I don't... Have you even heard of it? No, I haven't heard of it. Okay, I didn't so know. let me... Like, I know Donnie Darko, obviously, but I have no right. idea. Let me rattle it. off some of this cast for you real quick. The Rock. Justin Timberlake. Sarah Michelle Geller, um, Sean William Scott, uh, Amy Poehler, Sherry O'Terry. Uh, did I say John Lovitz? Like, there's yeah, a, yeah. there's so many people in that movie, and it's it's wild. Um, anyways, enough about Southland Tales. But to compare it, that's kind of how I felt like. So it's very much a movie that is. Bo was afraid is very much a movie that is out there. You know, maybe not one that you're going to recommend to everybody, but if you enjoy Ari Aster, which I do, I think Hereditary is the scariest movie I've seen in the past like 15 years. Scared the shit out of me. I watched. Yeah. I started watching it at like midnight, though, so that probably didn't help. Uh, Midsummer is also very great. I think Midsummer is probably most people's of all of the three that he's made. Probably most people's favorite. I'd, yeah, I'd I agree. have a guess. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was very excited going into this movie. Um, just because I like Ari Aster, Ari Aster. and I, I think he delivered, but we'll, we'll talk about that more. So let's get into it. The three big things. Billy, as the guest, I've decided you get to do two of the big things, and then I'll do one big thing, uh, and maybe a bonus big thing. But we'll start with you, Billy. What's your first big thing about Bo is Afraid? So I am a big fan of the rapper Danny Brown, and he has a podcast, and he was talking about how he was – he made a few albums. He was looking out at the audience at his live shows and he didn't love the crowd that was there. Like he was getting DMS about creepy guys being at his, his show. And he kind of wanted to change up his style a little bit. So he made a new album. And when he started touring with that album, the crowd seemed to change a little bit. And I think that's what Ari Aster is doing with this movie. I don't think he had any idea that hereditary and midsummer were going to be hits. And I don't think he loved that they were hits. As weird as that sounds, um, I imagine Bo's Afraid is his biggest budget. So it kind of teeters him on the edge of becoming super mainstream. He already is with his first two movies for sure, because they were massive hits for the budget. But I think he's trying to alienate the audience a little bit. And I respect that. You saw that a little bit with Babylon. You just have a, these massive directors that are have been chosen to be like the new uh, faces of Hollywood almost. And they don't like the direction that their careers are going or the audiences that are following them. And as a result, I think it's going to polarize a lot of people. Like that's not a hot take, obviously with Bo's afraid it's, it's uh it's going to be a polarizing movie, but I think that's a reason that gets me excited when I kind of get that vibe with the movie. And when I hear people that have extreme reactions, it's going to make me want to go see the movie rather than a consensus. Like this is an all time and Bo is Afraid is definitely not an all-time movie. It's going to piss a lot of people off. But, yeah, it just makes me excited when a director is given the reins to something and seemingly there's no audience or uh, studio interference and they just went for it. So that's my pitch. If yeah. you like that type of experience, just to embrace yourself with the artist vision, go for it. I Be their new audience that they, they kind of want. Yeah, I think that's great. I am – I'm in – I agree with you. There is like a selfish part of me that that kind of says like I have to really like mm -hmm. the artist to be okay with them doing that. Right. In this case, though, Ari Aster, love the artist. So mm -hmm. for me, like going into this movie, I read a few reviews, kind of got the idea or, or the sense that people were like, how dare he like make this movie? And like, how dare he doesn't like, you know, try to reach the audience? 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't, I don't care if I like it. I like it. You know, right. if you don't, you don't. What's funny is that even with a lot of those reviews, Ari Aster, or, um, excuse me, Bo's Afraid still has like a, I think like a 69 on Rotten Tomatoes right. and an even higher audience score. Yeah, so so well. that's, I mean, that kind of shocks me a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. but again, here we are both saying we both liked it. We both mm-hmm. enjoyed it. So, you know, maybe it's more mainstream, maybe more people like it than we thought. Right. Uh, I think what it has going for it is, you know, it is really funny. Like there mm-hmm. are parts of the movie that are, that are pretty funny. Uh, some parts that are just bonkers out there. Um, but I'm, I'm with you overall. I, I do think that an artist being able to kind of do their own thing, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it's very, I guess the, the, the best way to look at it is that it's, it's exciting in the sense that like, you know, you're going to see something you've never seen before. Mm-hmm. So if you just kind of let somebody do their own thing, like, you know, in this movie or like you mentioned Babylon, like you're going to see something you haven't seen before. And right. that's exciting. Um, however, if you don't like that artist, then like you're probably not going to care or like it. Right. So exactly. Yeah. And the weird thing with this, like Bab- or, uh, yeah, Babylon was given like a hundred twenty million dollar budget, which in terms of the success of that, in terms of my enjoyment, totally worth it. But I was afraid it was forty million dollars or something like that. Like, obviously, that's a shit ton of money, but it's not that much money for Hollywood movies. Right. A director that's had massive hits. So the reaction of people being like, this is irresponsible to give this person this much money to make a movie like this. It's like, it's $40 million. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be a snob or anything like that, but it's not that much money for a guy that's made like $100 million with his first two openings. So right. I think it's going to break even no matter what, just given the reputation of uh, Ari Aster. And that seems like an appropriate leash to give a director of like we can give you 40 million bucks since you've been such a huge success whereas damien chazelle it's like you go straight to 120 million dollars when i don't think he had any movies as big as ari Aster's movies maybe la la land got up there right but yeah just like that jump it was so extreme i understand maybe the pushback there but with ari Aster, it there's no no room i think to if, if you don't buy with his style and you're mad that that type of director is getting that much money i just it's it's not that much money. It's a mid level comedy essentially. Right. That just happens to be almost three hours. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's um. It, it's definitely one of those movies where. It, yeah, it's a big swing for sure, just, and, and that kind of leads into my big thing. Um, I and I kind of already said it. I don't think people are gonna like this movie. Um, Mm -hmm. now I, I mentioned the Rotten Tomatoes score, uh, and the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. It definitely kind of proves me wrong a little bit, but as I was saying, I don't, I can't recommend this movie to any, like it's different for guys like you. It's different for guys like Drew. Um, I don't, I couldn't recommend it to any of the other Santa boys. I really couldn't. They, if I, I guarantee if any of them see this movie, it's actually just going to make them mad. Like they, Mm -hmm. if you don't like Birdman, you're going to hate this movie. Like, well, I don't like Birdman, so it's a okay. Well, that's a whole other thing, <laughs> but I, you know, you're just you know, you know, it's you're not gonna like it. And what's surprising me is how well it has actually been received. Now, of course, as I would imagine, there are a lot of reviews out there. People kind of like shitting on this movie a lot just because it's so crazy. There are some wild things in this movie that mm-hmm. are just like what what like and they save a lot of them towards the end where you're just like yeah. what the f- what the hell am i watching right. um which can i mean it's definitely going to turn people off like mm-hmm. no doubt there was actually in the theater i was at now this is probably on her the person i was sitting next to in the theater had brought like maybe her 13 year old son 13 or 14 year old son to this what, movie what are they doing yeah. they did not make it through the whole movie they right. made it about probably a third of the way through the movie and they left so I don't really know what was going on there, but I, yeah. I, that's the tamer part of the movie. Right. The, that's the third, so yeah. It's pretty, yeah. The 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 third third yes. act of the movie is really where it gets nuts. But yeah, if you're leaving, you, you, first of all, don't bring a 13-year-old kid to this movie. Like even right. if like you're a pretty, you know, forward-thinking parent, you're like, well, we'll make his own, like he can make his own decisions about like, you know, what he wants to watch. No kid wants to watch this movie. No, definitely. Guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you think it was the kid that was driving this? I don't or know. The it was yeah, weird. It, it was a weird scenario. 
Do yeah. they think they were seeing like Evil Dead Rise? I could see that being like, oh, I love the Evil Dead movies. Let's go see that. And they just went for the wrong movie. But I think it was just like a mom maybe wanting to get out of the house and bring her son to go do yeah. something. Right. It's like, let's go see a movie. And this is the movie they chose. And it was like, okay, well, we had our dinner at Alamo. Let's go ahead and just leave. So, <laughs> right. yeah. So, again, that that's kind of my big thing is, you know, I wrote down I don't think people like this movie. I think really my big thing is it's not a recommendable movie to just the average movie watcher. Yeah. Um, but if you love Ari Aster and you love just like, you know, big swings, go for it. You, I think mm-hmm. you will enjoy it. So, um, and then, yeah, let's round it out with the third big thing. And to that, I will give to you, Billy. What was your other big thing on this movie? Oh, man. So this is might be a little bit of a stretch, and I'm going to hit some spoilers, really just talking about a couple scenes that really reminded me of the movie Step Brothers. Light spoilers. Go yes, light it. spoilers. So the, I don't think this part's a spoiler, but the movie has kind of like four stages to it. The first part, he's in a New York-type city with pure chaos going on. <clears throat> then he goes to a suburban neighborhood and then he goes to the forest and then he ends up back at his at, at his childhood home and this part is in the suburban area he wakes up from a traumatic experience and he's having dinner or lunch with the family that took him in to take care of his wounds after being hit by a car and it really reminded me of the stepbrother first dinner scene when the whole family's together like Derek shows up Adam Scott's character for the first time uh, Nathan Lane is just going crazy in this scene. Amy Ryan is really funny. Joaquin is still in the days. Um, it, it's just so funny and just like a lot, a kind of really good one-liners and the entire time, the way it's lit, the weird family that's around him. I was like, is this inspired by Step Brothers? Which, I mean, for how funny this movie is, like it's got some broad comedy moments. And um, I think people will recognize that and maybe find enjoyment in little scenes here and there. And then in the, uh, in the forest section, there's a really beautiful like moment where Joaquin's like fantasizing about this life that maybe he could have had. Um, there's a play going on. And at the end of it, he's talking to his three sons in this made up uh, vision. And he's saying how, like, how did my sons get here? Even though I never made them. And the sons say something like, Dad, how are we here if you never made me with mom? And it reminded me of the scene in Step Brothers where Richard Jenkins goes, talking about how he, he was a dinosaur as a kid, and John C. Riley goes, Dad, you're human. You could never be a dinosaur. And that inflection <laughs> just killed me. And I, I think I was the only one in the theater thinking about Step Brothers in those two moments. But I, like I said, it, this has got some broad comedy moments, and you're going to be laughing. And since this is the three big things, and we're if you're on the fence... This is my push maybe for you seeing it is this is like a comedy with really disturbing things in it, but it's not scary like Ari Aster's other movies. Yeah. So um, I think there's enjoyment to be had in that respect where you're going to, there's such a long runtime that you're going to be like, oh, I like those few scenes. And I think the, the funny nature of this could get you through what otherwise could be a pretty torturous experience. But mm-hmm. what do you think? Do you agree in the, like, for how funny it is, or I do. I there are parts of this movie that are, are truly like laugh to me. Like you know, there are a few, and it really had to do with like line delivery over situation. Mm-hmm. Like there were a few right. lines delivered, in particular by Nathan Lane, mm-hmm. um, which was going to be my my bonus thing. Uh, yeah. Since you know, hey, look, I host the podcast. I get to have we can do more than three things, and I Absolutely. got a bonus thing. But my <laughs> it was going to be Nathan Lane because there's some line delivery in this movie that he makes. Um, that just had me cracking up, like really, really funny. Like, and it's Nathan Lane is very, very funny, and mm-hmm. but like some of the things he said are very un Nathan Lane like in this movie, mm-hmm. and that's why, <laughs> so I found it so funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it is. There are you know scenes like that. You know, I I didn't think about Step Brothers, but I totally see it now in retrospect. Right. Um, you know, some of those scenes in there. I think the the big thing too that. I was trying to do for the first probably hour, hour and a half of the movie was figure out, okay, so like some of this is in his head and some of this is actually happening, happening. Mm-hmm. What's real, what's fake. And then you kind of realize like, no, like that, it doesn't apply here. Like there no, is no like matter. reality or like, <clears throat> in his mind, it's all the same. And I know that probably doesn't make a lot of sense hearing this on a podcast if you haven't seen the movie, 
but like it's very much like it subverted my expectation of like oh well he's like he has mental issues and he imagines all of this Mm -hmm. and this is what really is happening kind of like now this is a spoiler for joker but like how in joker he like has all these really great things going on and it turns out all of it was in his head like in that kind of makes him snap so it's kind of like that but a a little different in the sense that like you there is no the lines are completely blurred in bows afraid there is no reality there is no like imaginary it's all the same and i think that's a really really interesting take to Mm -hmm. have um and it again it it kind of subverted my expectations of what i thought this movie was going to be and ultimately i think that's why i ended up liking it um you know in in all honesty i I liked it more than i thought i was going to like it um even being a fan of ari aster going into the movie so um but yeah those are kind of our three big things and that's really all there is to this podcast we want to keep it short we want to keep it simple especially if you've never seen the movie we don't need to go into a long huge diatribe as to you know what the movie is especially if you haven't seen it so we hope that now that you've heard this you kind of have a better idea of you know what you know what to expect and and you know better idea of whether or not you want to see it in all honesty um but i will give you this billy is there anything else you want to say about the movie before we kind of end it um not particularly just that yeah if you're worried about being scared this isn't the type of movie that you is, is going to scare you to death. And Ari Aster might be the best horror director in terms of pure scares they have going. So I expected to be way more scared, but I wasn't disappointed that I wasn't scared. Like I was happy to kind of just let myself be a part of this world. And like, like when you were talking about like, is it real or is it not? Yeah. I spent maybe 20, 30 minutes trying to be like, get my bearings a little bit. And then I kind of surrendered to what was happening in the movie and when a director can convince me to surrender and not really think about those things of if it's real or if it's not, um, I, I think that means that at least it works. Yeah. So, and that's, yeah. that's hard to do. Like it's mm-hmm. really, really hard to do because I think as people, we, we want things to be very clean and mm-hmm. clear and we want to understand it. And this is like, you don't really understand what's going on in this movie, but you buy into it. And it's mm-hmm. like, who cares? I'm, I'm enjoying this. And that's, that's really hard to do, but you know, somehow Ari Aster does that. Uh, I would also just say before we end it too, I do recommend hereditary and midsummer. Oh, yeah. I'm, mm-hmm. I don't like horror movies like, mm-hmm. and it's not because like I'm scared. I'm a little scared, but like, it's more like, I feel like most horror movies are not good. Um, right. <laughs> and hereditary in particular, uh, I think is one of the most well-made horror movies I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, Midsummer, you know, up there as well. Um, so I do recommend those movies as well. Um, and if you're into big swings and you're okay, just saying like, I give up, I just want to have a good time. I highly mm-hmm. recommend Bo is afraid. Mm-hmm. Um, so that being said, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Billy, I'm really glad that you joined me for the pilot episode of three big things. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything that you would like to plug before we go? Yeah, but uh, this this week, Drew and I, with Do You Like Apples, we uh, did our top 10 A24 movies. We did our own list and then combined it. And uh, I don't think we had too many hot takes on there of Ari Aster movies. Midsommar made the list over Hereditary. Um, but yeah, we release a newsletter every Friday morning and occasionally do some podcasts like this. Our wonderful app, Spotify Live, got taken down. So we're trying to figure out our next move Uh with podcasts or live stream form. But uh, yeah, every Friday, uh, subscribe to Do You Like Apples on Substack and on Instagram and Twitter. It is at you like underscore apples. Cool. Yeah, thanks, Kenny. I had a great time, man. Yeah, man. Well, I'm really glad you were able to to hang out and, and talk this movie. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, of course, yeah, like I said, I'm Kenny of Cork Bats, head boy of the Cineboys. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find the Cineboys uh, on, on social media. You can see it up here. It says at the Cineboys if you're watching on YouTube. So it's at Cineboys on Instagram and Twitter. 
Uh, and then you can, of course, subscribe to our podcast. So if you subscribe to the Cineboys podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever, you're going to get this episode. You're also going to get the regular Cineboys podcast episode. So please do that. Rate, review, subscribe. Uh, that goes a long way for us. And then also be sure to check out Cork Bats. Uh, first and foremost, CorkBats.com. Uh, there's probably going to be some pretty good stuff up there about Austin Huff wearing uh, Kim Mulkey's jacket to a Cubs game yesterday, which blew up. Very exciting to see, you know, on the Cubs Twitter handle, our friend Austin. So that that's always cool. Um, so, yeah, check out CorkBats.com. Also, um, CorkBats on – it's at CorkBats on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. Uh, and then, of course, uh, YouTube.com slash CorkBats. You can catch all kinds of CorkBats content, including our videos of our podcast. So – um and then yeah that's pretty much it billy i appreciate you i'll probably have you on again because let's be honest there's some weird movies coming out and i know yeah. that the other santa boys are not going to want to talk about them so probably be seeing more of you in the future love that i'll be back all I'm, right i'm free any, anytime cool man thanks have a good one see you guys